Today in the news, we got some Intel and some NVIDIA. What's up guys, I'm Kevin Kent, I mean, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with Intel. With everything happening right now, we weren't sure when Intel would announce their 10th generation of CPUs. Well, thanks to news outlet El Chapuza Informatico, we now have a release date. Sure, it's not from Intel, but this Spanish news outlet got quite a few leaks slash early reviews right late last year, so I'm inclined to believe it. The date is April 30th, so it would be announced in about a month. Looking at performance though, the 10900K is still making the news, with benchmarks being uncovered every week, this time by leaker extraordinaire Tom Apisak. In the Geekbench multi-core scores against the 9900K, the 10900K gets close to 30% faster than the last gen's flagship, most of which is due to the core increase as we can see from the single core scores, which is about 7% faster than the 9900K. Now that's all great as a refresh of a refresh with two extra cores, but when you take pricing into consideration, it once again doesn't really make sense to buy. At $500 $160 allegedly or even cheaper at 500 the 3900X is cheaper and still more useful. Also with Intel, it looks like the company is playing a who can deplete your battery the fastest game in the laptop segment. According to a leaked slide, Intel's flagship mobile processor will still be an 8-core 16-thread CPU, but will have a boost clock of up to 5.3 gigahertz with thermal velocity boost. Now that last part is kind of important since to be able to reach it, much like Ryzen's precision boost, you're going to need to have enough cooling. It's not a new requirement though, this feature has been available for years, but we're nearing its limits at 5.3 gigahertz. I don't want a five inch thick laptop. In any case, the mobile line should be unveiled in just a few days on April 2nd. Moving on to Nvidia, we have some good news for once for GeForce Now. The company is partnering up with Epic Games to bring new games and exclusives from that store over to the service every week starting now. Right now, Epic has released Control, and I'm talking about the game, into GeForce Now and a handful of other games too. If you wanted to test out ray tracing in that game but don't have a strong enough PC, you can go for the Founders Edition of the service and turn RTX on. Although then you'll have to suffer with the compressed video quality. By the way, if you haven't signed up yet, you might want to try ASAP, at least for the free version. I've received emails and seen comments about people not even being able to sign up because there's too much traffic right now, thanks to the quarantine. Next up, we've got the- Xtree, Xtree, check out the games for free. Shut up. So. We've got the free game check. By the way, I can't believe I missed out on Stanley Parable last week. It's like the only game I wanted to play and I just forgot to download it. Anyways, this week, the Epic Store offers us three games with one that is actually pretty insane. First, there's Tormentor x Punisher, a pretty gory top-down shooter that looks straight out of an arcade machine. I'm definitely testing this one out. Then there's Figment, which looks like a calm action adventure game with a pretty art style. And lastly, you can get World War Z. Yeah. I mean, that game hasn't been out for a year and you can get it for free until next Thursday. Plus, there's multiplayer in that game and it's supported by GeForce Now. So you can tell a friend to get on GeForce Now through their PC, Mac, or Android phone, then go tell them to go get the game for free and voila, free multiplayer games. You take all you can when you're in quarantine. Moving on to some Apple news, analyst Ming-Chi Kuo says that several ARM-based MacBooks and iMacs are going to be coming next year. We've been hearing for well over three years that 2020 would be the year of ARM Macs, and way before that, that Apple wanted to design its own computer chips. Looking at the evolution of the current ARM processors in the iPhones, and especially the latest iPads, I think it's the 12 Bionics, whatever, we're pretty close. The power efficiency is great so far on these chips. As for the compatibility of the apps or the OS, well, Apple has full control over it in its own ecosystem. And even if some apps break during the transition, people who are stuck with the Apple ecosystem will just find an alternative. That's how they get you. As for the pro scene, I'm sure Apple will either stick to the high-end Intel products or maybe even AMDs as we saw them add references to their products in their latest OS updates. Anyways guys, that is pretty much it for the news today. Don't forget to leave your questions down below for the Q&A using the hashtag Q&A3. By the way, I read every single comment. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. By the way, it's just, I have crazy hair.
That's why I wore a hat. But you can call me Kevin Kenson. I'll make a video on the Nintendo Switch if you want.